Can you hear me okay? Hello, Michelle, Godmode, Consuelo. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for dropping in. You're going to hear me a lot better as soon as I start drawing over at the table because that's where the microphone actually is. You're hearing my voice echoing off the wall. Hope you guys are uh, ready to learn some stuff about realistic drawing. Does the video look good? Hi, Nosmo. Great. Looks like we're going to be able to have today's session start off on time. Excellent. Just going to wait. Uh, we're still a little early, about two, three minutes. Make sure uh, give people enough time to show up. Hope you all had a good day. So while we're waiting, um, maybe some of you want to tell me where you're from, what part of the world you are located. Delaware, Louisiana, South Louisiana. All right. Well, Michelle, you're pretty close to where I'm at. I'm up here in Northwest Arkansas. South Wales in the UK. All right. <laughs> Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, okay. Sure you want to mention that? No, just kidding. So Nosmo, I will guess that it's 1.30 a.m. over there, right? Well, Consuelo, I'm, I'm going to be talking about what I'm doing as I'm drawing. And I'm going to start off with some uh, shading detection. There are some areas that need attention. So before I start fixing it, I want to show you uh, what I am doing to determine that it needs fixing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, Nosmo, I appreciate you staying up late to um, tune in. Michelle, you are welcome. And um, I hope for your future drawing, you uh, get a reference photo. Uh, God mode, I have been drawing now going on three years, three years, maybe going on four now, I'm not sure. 
I, I started in September of 2014, I believe was my my starting point. So time is time is starting to fly, I tell you. Yo, well, from Turkey. Awesome. Welcome to the live stream. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, we're now one minute, two minutes into uh, the 7.30 starting mark. And um, I'm going to move over to the drawing table at this time. I'll be able to get your uh, questions and comments from over here. I'm all set up for that because I'm going to be drawing on the table over here. Uh, last night during my testing of the live stream, I was drawing from this table over here. It's flat. I can't see from an angle. I was having a hard time, so I'm back. I'm back on my easel board. And so you can see that cable going across the top there. That's a temporary fix just so I can get me a, a camera way over there uh, for a live stream. And that way you can watch over my shoulders to see what I'm doing. And I'll talk as I am uh, drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hi, Gopal. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the uh, drawing and uh, let me know that. Uh, that you can see Robert Downey Jr. Okay, I'm now at the drawing table. You probably can hear me a whole lot better too, boy, over here. Maybe you'll have to turn your volume down at this point because I'm right underneath the camera. Okay, so how does that look, folks? Can you see my drawing table okay? Okay, good. Awesome. Okay, that means you can hear me and you can see the table. Great. All right, well, then I'm going to get right into uh, working on this. Now where I left off yesterday was I started adding the ear here and I wanted to just shade it a little bit, just bring it in a little bit. But right now I can see that there is a difference in contrast. If you'll notice how dark it is right here and then you can see how light it is right here. It is not the same here. It is darker here than here. However, the amount of dark to light is much more drastic here than it is here. Another thing I noticed too, if we take this reference here, let me get some tape. And Just put this up for a second here. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, good. Now, what I want everyone to focus on is this area right here of the face. Now, just by looking at this photo, okay, it may look like, okay, it's pretty much the same dark tone, but it's not. You use one of these things, for example, and I'm keeping this one in a plastic bag because I ruined my other one. Uh, let's see if I can find that other one. There it is. So this other one here, and it's got speckles and stuff on it. Anyway, so you try to, like I'm going to go right here, and you can tell that that's darker than value 5. Okay. And it looks like it's also mildly darker than value 4. 
So maybe it's around here somewhere, but I don't care where exactly it is because I'm not trying to match this with this. I'm using this to help me determine this area from this area from this area and so forth. What? Any one of these will work. For example, let's just take this one right here. Even though this is lighter than here, no, notice what happens when I move this over to here, just right next to it. Look at the tone, and now here. Did you just see what happened? It just went lighter. Now it's darker. So I don't have to match this to this. I can just use this or this one or this one. It doesn't matter just so that I can get some kind of a reference and then go right next to it and see if it's the same. And you can see it changed. It went lighter. So this is telling me that this area is darker than this area. And I need to, on my drawing here, using the same, I'm going to use the same one here. Okay, notice the shade that I have here. And then if I move over to here, you don't even see that much of a difference. See that? Because I have one tone here, yet there is two tones here. So before I finish the ear, because the ear is right next to the side of the face, I want to get the tone of the side of the face about as close to where I want it before I finish the ear. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start darkening this area right here. And you can see it kind of goes from here to here to here and it just edges out to here and it changes from here to here you notice I did that with this tool so with that in mind for example I'm gonna take a dark pencil like right now I'm using this 6b pencil okay and it's a dark pencil and I just want to start with some kind of a dark pencil it may not be the one I'm gonna end up with but what I want to do is I just want to roughly figure out where the border is for this tone change. So I'm, I'm following where I believe it is, and I'm, I'm seeing it here. Um, I'm seeing it roughly here. There's another tone change here. So you've got one tone, two tone, three tone. And you have to really, you know, the, the the way to really do it is squint your eyes. Just squint your eyes and you'll see it. That's how that's how you can do it real easy. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of track that in just to give me a reference to where to start. Okay. So about right there for now. And then I can come back and and change that. And I notice it comes up to here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this 6B and I'm going to just start shading and I'm doing the little ovals type of thing. Uh, Nosmo, my, my daily job is that I'm a market analyst for investors. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and Start bringing that in a little bit more. Just a little. And notice, hold the pencil on the back here. Small circular movements. I remember it came out to here. You can see the little line I drew there. That's all going to disappear after I draw in here with my shading and as I shade out. So I'm just going to get this part started here just to get me some kind of differential of shading. I don't expect to get it all done in five, six minutes. Now I got to move the reference photo under the same light that I have on my drawing. If I look at my reference photo off to the left or off to the right, it doesn't have the same lighting, unfortunately, because right now my room lights are off and I have this otter, this ot light coming straight down here. So when I'm working with these shades, I need to kind of come in here and, and look at where it is. You can see it right here. 
it comes down in here, it comes down here, goes over to here, and like this. So mimicking that, I'm going to make a, make a line, just a really light line as a reference. I notice it comes down. And I can see, you know, I can see the shapes, so I'm just going to go with that. Just makes my life so much easier. And then it kind of comes out in a triangle here, and then it comes in just like that. So now I have my demarcation marked in here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add a little more shading to this area right here as well. Don't put any pressure on the paper in case you have to take anything off. You let the pencil just ride on the paper. This is how you do it. At least that's how I do it. And I like to use the oval type of um, shading approach when I'm doing a man's face. If I'm doing a baby's face with the really smooth skin, I'm not going to want to use this approach. I'm probably going to get some graphite powder on a Q-tip and just smooth it on and um, or just use the tapered stroke approach. Okay, so you can see where the shading came in here like so. And it has this line here. So what I'm going to do at this point is start blending. I'm going to pick up one of my paper blenders here. Now, some of these are already pretty much loaded, as you can see, that's loaded, and I don't want to put that on here. If the other side's loaded as well, what you can do is you just simply take your kneaded eraser and just poke it a few times and get it to take off any excess that you have on there, or get yourself a different paper blender, one that isn't so used. And I hold it like a pencil in the back and just start blending. And as I'm blending, I'm making sure that I don't miss any spots here. I want it even. And if I have any uneven spots, I'll come in with a kneaded eraser and touch up on it. But so far, so good. I don't seem to have a problem here. It's going on real nice and smooth. Don't want to lose that triangle shape that I have right down here. Some white spots there I want to kind of cover up a little bit. Okay, I, I can see it's a little dark right there. So I'm going to take the kneaded eraser, make it into a point. Because that way I can target it, the spots that I need to work on. Now I'm going to slide this card over with and try not to... to, to push it up against what I've already drawn because it'll it'll act as a blender and it'll start smearing. I just want to kind of move it over where I can rest my hand over here. And I'm going to kind of just dab the heavy area right here. Kind of you can get some blotches in there. Okay, I think I got most of that. And 
and I'll continue with my blending. And whatever you're doing with your drawing, make sure that you continually look over at your reference. Don't go long periods of doing things and not looking at your reference. You, you want to stay on track, so just every couple of seconds or so, shoot your eyes over to your reference and see that you're on track. Okay, I have a little unevenness there. So let me just get that 6B pencil here and so it's shade, blend, shade, blend. You guys following along okay? Understand what I'm doing? Great, thanks. Want to make sure you're still alive out there. All right. You know, when I started learning how to draw uh, three, three and a half years ago, um, just watching YouTube videos, I would have really, I would have died for watching someone do this live, you know, and I didn't even think about it, doing it myself. It just kind of happened with the live drawing thing, and we got the live stream working yesterday finally and then some were saying hey you know why don't you just do it again I'm thinking why not I mean I'm gonna be drawing anyway why not let you tag along and learn and I guess that gives you know you guys the opportunity that I did not have and I wish I did have. All right, good, Michelle. I'm glad you're watching and learning. You are very welcome. Now, Michelle, just going to talk a little bit about your drawing that I saw yesterday um, on the ferry. You see what I'm doing here? This is what you need to do. Okay. Well, thanks, Blue Rose. Um, that would be kind of cool, huh? Being in a gallery. Yeah, I'm a late starter. 
but better late than never. You see, if you take, for example, that, that drawing that you have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break here for a second and, and, and give you a little example. Okay. Um, no, I'm not really creating texture. I'm, I'm taking out the dark spots where the, where the graphite's a little too heavy because I want an even tone. I don't want a dotted tone. And when you're drawing, you can't help but sometimes have darker areas. And so if you put this in a point, and then you can just target just those little areas, you can lighten it up so that it doesn't look like it was ever there. Okay, so let's just say that this is my picture of, of a fairy <laughs> or whatever, okay? Um, okay, I'm going to draw, let's say we're drawing a person here, all right? And this is just kind of a rough, okay, let's say we got a person here mustache, you know, chin, whatever. This is how I used to draw, by the way, folks, just like that. That would be about as good as I can get it, like that. <laughs> Cartoon, right? All right. There we go. But for, for illustration purposes, a person's face, okay, isn't flat. A person's face has contour. It's going to it's going to go from away from you, towards you, and away from you because you're going to go around the head and come back the other way. Okay, so it's one of these things. That which is farther away from you is normally going to be darker than that which is close to you if you're if the light, for example, is coming from this direction. Okay. If you look at the tone of your drawing, and in the case of the fairy drawing that you had, if you were to look at the nose area, and then you were to look back here by the ear, the rear jaw bone, let's say this is the jaw right here, you would notice that your, your tone, and in the center too, you would notice that your tone was pretty much the same here, here, and here. Well, if they're the same, all three spots, that means they're all linear. They're all in the same plane and they're all the same distance from light. And that is going to give you flat. It's kind of like a flat earth, <laughs> okay? Um, which is not the case. You want rounded. And so in that case, uh, if the light's over here, for example, you're going to want this area to be a little bit darker. Then you're going to lighten up a lighter tone. And then as you start to go down the other side, you're going to start darkening back up again, dark, and it's going to be the darkest furthest away from you and furthest away from you here, okay? And so you need to have that changing of tone if you want to give it a more uh, realistic look to your drawing, okay? And so that's what I'm doing here. You'll notice that the light, the light is here. It's shining really bright in this area here. It's less light right here, especially where the nose is blocking the light. It starts to get dark here. And then as it goes away, it's much darker here. And this gives you more of the, that his face is coming out this way. His nose, you can see, is protruding up towards the camera. And it doesn't look flat. And that's what you want to do with your own uh, drawing. Okay, I hope that helps you, Michelle. All right, good. Got some pencil delivery tomorrow. I always like, I always like it when my pencils show up. Of course, you won't be using all of them at one time. Okay, now, you can see right off the bat, notice how this new dark tone is way darker than right next to it. Whereas here, it's not a drastic jump from here to here. It's, 
it would, it's half the jump, I would say, from here to here. So I need to now bring this up a notch so that this isn't such a drastic dark to light, but it's a more dark to medium. Well, I just used the 6B to get this tone here. So what do you think would be the pencil that I would want to go down to to work in the next area here? Anyone want to take a guess? Okay, go Paul, that's a good guess. Okay, Michelle, same 4B, that's a good guess. And while those are valid, I'm actually gonna go down to a 2B. The reason why is because the 4B and 6B, the subtlety is not it, 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 the differences are is not that much and I want to creep up to it so in other words I want to I want to bring this up slowly and I don't want to overshoot it so if I start with a 2b then I can compare again and if it's not dark enough guess what I can do then I can move up to a 3 or 4b sound good all right so, looking at this, I'm going to be working on this area right here to here. And I'm going to be working underneath here, down to here, this area right here. Okay, and right here. This is what I want to work on. And then the third area would be right here. See, I, I do it in steps. I have to do the dark one first, then go to the next one and so forth and work my way down. So I'm going to do a 2B first and see if I can bring that up. Now, something I noticed right off the bat up here, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing that big of a difference on here. As a matter of fact, it looks the same to me. So I'm going to have to verify and make sure that I don't overshoot it. Yeah, that's that's the same tone. That looks like the same tone to me. So what I need to do is since I've already, let's make sure this one here and here is the same. And they look the same pretty much. Let me just let me just do something here real quick to make sure that I'm back on the 6B here real quick because I'm not seeing okay here down to here and here okay so it was here okay it doesn't look like it's getting any darker there and it goes up to here so it was already too dark here I'm gonna to have to I'm gonna to have to take a little bit off now what I'm going to do first before I get down to my 2B, and this is for purposes of adjustment. So I'm going to take my chamois here, okay, and I'm just going to make a little point on it, okay, just to make it easy for me to, to direct the lines. And I'm going to kind of work this area right here. Okay, I think I got that. Let's make sure I get that triangle in there. Okay, all right. Now that wasn't difficult to do. Now let me test something out here. Okay, so it's dark and then subtle light. I hope you can see that. Okay, or I can use this one here and you should be able to see it. 
Let me, uh, let me get the other card. This plastic is causing some glare. I'm afraid it's not going to show on the camera. So let's just do this here. Okay, so we look at that there, and then we look at that there. You can see it goes from a darker tone to a lighter tone. So it's very subtle, but that's what I want. I want subtle. Now let's see about here. It goes from a dark tone to a subtle light tone. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to stick with that for now. And now I'm going to use that 2B pencil. And I'm going to work not up here because I like where this is right now, but I'm going to work down here because this one here, if we compare, okay, compare this to here. That's a little lighter than this. So I'm going to work here. I'm not going to touch this. I'm good with this for right now. I'm going to do this one right here with the 2B pencil and just bring it up just a little bit. Yes, I always start with the left eye first. Blue Rose. OK, I can see with the 2B that I'm already getting good darker tone. Okay, I could see that right there. Now I'm going to go from the area that I've already drawn and bleed it out so that I can diffuse the demarcation line. Left or right? Yes, because I'm right-handed. I'm going to be careful here because I actually don't want to lose that highlight that I have right here. Okay. Now, if you'll notice as I'm doing this, notice how subtle the tone change is from here to here. With the exception, of course, this area right here, I got a blotch. So I'm going to I'm going to tone that down. Use this and just carefully lift very gently now. Otherwise it's going to look like this. I just want to take some of the dark off of that blotch there so that it blends into its surroundings. I'm not ready to draw moles and pimples and things just yet. Okay, there we go. Voila. Okay, here we go. Now, notice the subtle change from here to here. The 2B was actually a really good choice on this one. I don't think I'm going to need to go to the 4B on this. And since I have the 2B in my hand, I'll go ahead and lay some base, base down here as well. Just a little bit. I do want to go back to like a 2H and put the initial base down. But I'm just going to get this demarcation line taken care of. For those of you who may not know what demarcation is, it's, it's just it's it's the point where two things come together. That's the demark line. Okay. It's a term that we used uh, in telecommunications when you would bring telephone wires to those blocks and you punch them down on those punch blocks. We used to call those demarcation blocks. That was back in the days when I was in telecommunications for a couple of years. Long, long time ago. Okay, using a Q-tip. I'm going to do some blending here just so that we get a nice subtle shift in tone.
All right. Well, let's see here. Okay. Looks like I have too dark here. I need a little bit need a little bit more here otherwise I have this line here that shows up. That's not good. Okay. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's just these very subtle differences that are not on the reference. It's not on the reference. I don't want it on my drawing. Yeah, if you're left-handed, you definitely going to want to start off on this side because otherwise your hand's going to smear everything if you start from here and you move that way with left hand. But, you know, it comes down to whatever you're comfortable with, you know. Okay. Now, let's take another look at the tone here. Again, we have a very subtle shift. You notice it just very subtle. Here, it's subtle, but is it a little more abrupt? That's the question. Okay, so I'm going to look at this. Just pick any one of these. That's a good jump there to there. That is a good jump. And then here to here. Now, let's take a look at that. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Now you see this. You look at that, how bright it is in here. And then you come over here, it's not as bright. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit more. So now I'm going to use my 4B. But very carefully, just to make sure I don't lose that tone difference. Because from a 6B to 4B, it's not a big jump at all. And I'm just letting the pencil glide ever so lightly, just letting it glide. I want it to be very, very subtle. All right, so just about right to there, because I'm gonna I'm gonna to be this a little bit more later here. So just just to subtle, make a subtle difference there. Okay, now. We can see there's a tone difference going from here to here. But it's a very subtle tone difference. I notice that the camera is a little more drastic, but here in person, it's not so much. And by the way, this is a glossy photograph. So the light is going to bounce off of it differently and go back to the camera in a different way. And so you don't see as much. You can probably see the difference of tone right here, coming right down this line here. But it's not as noticeable, for example, in here. This is a matted look. The light doesn't bounce back the same way. Now I noticed that I have some areas here that I have to be concerned with. I still have a very dark blotch right around here and I need to lighten that up just a little bit. It's really starting to bug me. It wants to stick around so much. Just real carefully want to get that dabbed out without causing white freckles which I'm already in danger of doing here. Okay, that's looking better. 
I'm going to take my 6B here again, and right here, I need to adjust a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay, get my 4B back again. Okay, and then again, I'm going to blend it out. Yes, um, the Q-tip is a smooth effect, pretty much, and it makes it easier to, to do bigger areas. Um, with the stump, I could be a little more deliberate in the areas that I want to go because it has a nice point. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now, what I need to do is the eye socket area here is the next phase. It's definitely darker than this area here. This looks like raccoon eyes right here. Okay, like he was in the sun with those glasses on. So what I'm gonna do here, since this was 2B and 4B, I've gotta go lower than that um, I'm going to use the HB pencil with a very light hand just to make sure I don't overdo it. And right off the bat here, there are some things I need. I need to get these lines in here. So I, I want to I find the reference points for that. So it comes down like here to here. Okay, and that actually that actually should have been right to there. So already. I'm off target here. And look, it just disappears so easily because I don't draw dark. I draw light. All right. So let me get that line in there. Let me figure out exactly where it is. It's here's this. Comes down to here. Okay, so I was way off. Okay. But it needs to come way to here, so it's going to come up and it's going to branch off to there. Okay, something like that. Oops, no, hold the pencil in your hand while you're moving around. Okay, let's see. I seem to be off again. My original sketch lines are gone in this area here. And uh, now I have to eyeball it. Uh, I hate having to eyeball everything, but that's okay. Let's see, this, this line here comes from here. Okay, just a little squiggly here, just, just to get something in there that represents Okay, and then uh, from this part of the eyeball straight down to here and then down to here is where that line starts. I'll put a little dot right there. And then from here to here, so I have that in the right spot, and then it needs to come up to here. Okay. And needs to curve. Uh, 
All right. Okay, I'll just get that in there for now. And then there's another one here. Most of this would get blended away, and I'll have to reestablish them lightly again. And let's see, I have one here, right about, let's see, reference to there to there. And you might wonder, well, why bother doing this if I'm just going to blend over it and make it all disappear again? Well, it just happens that when you're doing it that way, this way, um, it tends to actually kind of show up, at least just barely, that it's so subtle that, you know, people go, wow, that there's a lot of detail when actually what you did was you just picked one or two items and made sure to um, make them show up. And blending and redoing and blending and redoing makes it actually look better, I think. So that's how I do it. All right. There we go. All right. So we got some creepy lines in there. Okay, this is going to have to get darker. And this is going to have to get darker. Okay, so now that I got my little creepy lines in, I'm going to go ahead and Shade her down. Shade her down. Okay, we only have a few more minutes left for this live stream, and then I'll take some more questions before we end the session today. Let's see if I can get this eyeball thing here, raccoon eye, taken care of before we time out. And again, I'm using my little circular motion here to, to add tone. So we'll bring this up a little bit. I'll bring it down. I guess the right terminology is to bring it down a little bit. Okay. Let's bring that down a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to use the Q-tip again. So, and then the lines that I drew in there become faded, which is what you want because you don't want you don't want the guy to have Frankenstein lines, okay? You want it nice and subtle and in the background. And I'm going to show you something else to do with this in one second here. As soon as I blend this so that there's just a smooth transition between dark to light here. Instead of a sharp line, there we go, that's smoothing it out right there. Just the way I like it. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to end on this note right here. I'm going to show you something. Can you see this line right there? I don't know if you can see it. It's very faint, but if you're looking at the drawing in person, you'll definitely be able to see that line I drew in there. If you look at it here, let me use a pencil as a pointer, and I'll point this out. If you carefully look at this reference photo and you see that line that's going right up on his face right here, whoops, I stuck to my fingers. Okay, and it goes right up here. Notice right on the bottom of that line is a highlight. Because the light's coming down like this, it makes one side of that crevice dark, like a you know, like a valley. One side, one wall is going to be dark. That's on the top, and that's the line I put on there. And the 
other side of the wall is getting that full light hitting it and making it lighter than the skin next to it. So what you got to do, you have a couple of things. You can use the um, little pen eraser, for example, with a sharp point. And you can, I can add that little line to it very subtly. Or you can use that uh, tape trick that I have taught in a couple of my videos. Um, I don't have a strip already cut here, apparently. So I'm going to have to use this for now. But the other one with the tape, you can just draw it with your toothpick. And just very, very subtly on the bottom of the line, because the light's going this way, and you want to look at these details exact, okay? But you just, you just creep that. Make sure I got that, okay. And that goes up to there, about right there. Okay, now... I've given him a wrinkle right here, but you have to tone it down a little bit because it's not a bright highlight. It's kind of a dull highlight. So I just take this and just gently slide the Q-tip. Hopefully there's enough graphite to just subtly bring that line down. Okay. And that's a detail. And if you include various details in your drawing that you see in the reference, like these little tiny light dots here, for example, uh, if you see any more light creases, that's the only one I see is that one right there. Here's a little dark spot right here. You see those little tiny light bulb thingies? These little tiny lights are going off. That's those right there. Um, you got a little in the, in the eyebrows right here, so I can come in here later on and kind of pull out a couple of highlights in the eyebrow. Every one of these little details that you can see, and if you put it on your drawing, uh, will effectively give your drawing a realistic look to it. Okay, well that's as far as I'm going to bring that this drawing in tonight's session, so hold on one second as I switch the camera over and uh, I'll take some questions. stiff. It has a lot of shading going on. Okay, well that drawing is definitely coming along. It's uh, it's going to take some time, but I'm glad that you guys could, uh, you know, spend an hour with me as I um, I drew a little bit more about his face. Hope you've learned something. Um, now's a good time. If you have any questions as to what we just covered today or anything else, I'll address them. Before we call it quits, I see that we still have a um, couple of minutes. Thank you, Nosmo. No, um, I never have trouble with that eraser marking my paper. I love that tool, it's a great tool. There are certain things that I just can't do without, that's one of them. Well, I only use a smooth bristol, so I, I couldn't tell you about other kinds of paper. Yeah, it's probably too soft. I, I wouldn't know. Thanks, Michelle. Patient dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm a throwback from the 60s. Yeah. All right.
you know, it's just all about, you know, being patient, you know. Um, Gopal, yeah, um, as far as choosing your pencils, okay, some good brands. There are a lot of good brands, all right? Uh, the Mitsubishi High Uni, awesome quality Japanese drawing pencils, as well as the Tombos, really high quality. Um, the German pencils, such as the Stadler Mars Lumograph, you can't go wrong with those. Uh, if you get those, I would highly recommend you get both kinds, the regular graphite and the Lumograph Black. Those are nice to have. Um, you could pretty much use any pencil. Just some are more enjoyable to use than others. Uh, some have better quality. If you ever watch any of my pencil reviews, you'll see that sometimes you buy a brand and the shades are not even. They they go from you know light, darker, and then oops went light again, and then darker, darker, darker. Bad quality. So you'll stay away from those. But the ones that I just named, those are fine. Um, I'm going to be looking into uh, trying out a few others. Uh, someone suggested the uh, Sarah drawing pencil, so I'm going to see if I'm about about picking those up and testing them, because I do like them for writing. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what, the, what else to add to that. The Mitsubishi, the Tombos, the Stadler, Mars Lumograph. Now, I know some artists, you know, I know there's one out there that's, I think, um, I think it's Daryl Pink, I'm not sure, but, you know, he, he likes um, the Blick, pencils. Uh, that was like the first set that I bought. I didn't like them. I still have them here. I, I just assumed give them away to your neighborhood kids. I I just didn't like them. They were made, they're made in Czechoslovakia. Uh, not to put them down, but I just didn't like the pencils that much. Uh, so, you know, it could be a matter of taste as well. Um, now, I know it's Blue Rose here. He likes Favorite Castile 9000. Uh, that was one I've tested also. It wasn't my favorite. Um, I found them a little on the harder side overall, the lighter side. But, you know, it's always possible that I just got a bad batch. I mean, it's happened before. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know what? You, you just got to have to try different pencils until you find one that's, that's good. Uh, yeah, Michelle, the, the video, you know, the video, yesterday's video was not left up because of copyright infringement. 25 copyright strikes uh, because of the music I was playing in the background. Now, I knew that that was going to happen. I was just hoping to be able to edit it before um, putting it up, but they put it up for me automatically. So this will be up automatically as well. And uh, when that happens, uh, I'll just leave it up there. And, and all the future uh, live streams, I'll just leave it on there too, because I won't play any background music. Uh, you'll just hear me, you know, you know, me and the crickets. You won't hear any of that cool rock and roll that we had yesterday. I do miss music. I, I like music when I'm drawing. Uh, I like to rock out with my pencils, you know. So uh, that's probably why I can only last an hour tonight because I don't have my music. Yeah, yeah, they got me on the music. Okay, soon I just buy more. I want to try the high uni. Yeah, the high uni. Is, it's really nice. Now I've not drawn one drawing with the high uni. So you might be going, what? Why are you talking about it if you never use them? Well, I have used them. I just haven't drawn a portrait with them. But I have used them to grade other pencils, and they're so smooth. They're like butter. I love them that I don't want to use them up. No, actually, I have so many pencils, it's taking forever to get to them. But uh, <laughs> they're great. But I just I haven't drawn a picture with them. Uh, and I have a hodgepodge of pencils. As you can see on that pencil stand, 
there. Everything's backwards here. Okay. Um, I have Tombos, Stadlers, Casimir is a 4-H pencil. So I have quite a variety over there. Um, so you can mix and match them any way you want. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Just as long as you have, you know your tones. You know your 2H is going to be less than your H and less than your HB and then less than your 2B and less than your 4B and so forth. Okay, all that. Okay, anything else? You know, uh, Blue Rose, I think, I think all the 9Hs are ridiculous. <laughs> what do you need a 9H for? Hey, look at this. Where, where's that at? You see this toothpick? That's a 9H. Yeah, it's a 9H toothpick. I mean, what's the point? It's like you're drawing with a rock. Um, you know, if you're just really, really, like, heavy with your hand, uh, you need to you need to like have the lightest 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 marks and you're just you're just a brute Fred Flintstone and you just press them down too hard then yeah maybe go down to a six H at the most but who needs nine H hair toothpick nine H it's ridiculous now the high unit goes all the way to ten H. So you can guess that uh, from 5H to 10H are going to be never used. I'm never going to use them. I'm going to go get a cork board, put the cork board on the wall, and I'm going to sharpen those puppies, and I'm going to play darts with them. Because they, I, I can't see having any other use for those things. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, they're hard. I mean, they're going to they're, they're gonna crease your paper fiber and everything else, you know. 4-H, absolutely. That's as low as I want to go as well, 4-H. Um, most of the base that I do in my drawings, I start with 2-H. 4-H, maybe if I want to draw the whites of the eyes, which are not really white, I'll start with a 4-H. You know? Reeves Pencils um, or Dahmer and Rooney. Okay. Uh, I heard of Reeves. I haven't heard of Dahmer or Rooney, and no, I haven't used any of those. And I think I was looking for Reeves the other day. Somebody mentioned Reeves on um, one of the comments, but I couldn't find anything that was like locally sold. It's, maybe it's kind of a European thing or something. I don't know. But like, you know, I like to use the. Uh, the soft side of uh, Bristol, okay, you get you get Bristol paper, one side just a little bit more, uh, has a little more, what do you call, um, now I'm going blank, uh, pattern, you know, a little more tooth to it, paper tooth, and the other side's a little smoother, I like the smooth side of Bristol, that's what I'll use. Um, I do have texture, tooth texture, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I do have that 140 hot press watercolor from Arches um, because it was suggested by uh, JD, and um, I, it's a personal choice, people. Um, it's not my paper, it, it, I just don't. I don't like it, but, you know, he's a pro, and, you know, he knows what he's talking about, and, and I'm not even going to, uh, I'm not even going to say he's wrong, because he's, he's not. Um, if anyone's wrong, it would be me. The, I think it comes down to a personal choice in that regard, you know. I think the important thing is just, you know, acid-free, um, non-yellowing, Get a good high quality paper, and you should be good. Yeah, yeah, you know, and there's a there's a reason why some papers you know have more textures than others is because there are applications. I saw some drawings. Um, what is that called? The deviant art. 
that website, uh, this guy who uses the same technique I do as far as the oval drawing of the face and stuff, um, but he, he doesn't blend his out. He leaves it on there, and he uses, I noticed that he has this really textured look to his drawings and stuff, and you would want to use paper that kind of buys into that. Um, you definitely don't want to draw a baby's bottom with it, that's for sure, because that's just, that's just not going to come out looking too good. Um, I'm not sure how to spell, uh, pronounce this, goo, goo, ach, goo, ach, goo, ach. It's that white stuff, you know, um, I think they're fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using white paint, uh, this, however you say that, goo, goo, achy, goo, ach, um, sorry, um, but, um, yeah, it's, you know, you can use that for your highlights. Uh, I use uh, the white chalk that uh, comes with charcoal pencils. You have the black and the white. Well, the white is kind of a chalk because there's no such thing really as white charcoal. Good morning, Terry. Uh, let's see. I've already seen some valuable tips. Thanks again, Terry. All right. Well, hey, I hope you came early enough to see it from the beginning, at least from the middle, if anything. Um, it's it's going to be up there for you, and you can watch it later. Gouache. Okay, thanks for letting me know how that's pronounced. Gouache. 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 Yeah, I have some of it somewhere. I have some of it, but... You, I think you can get it in a pin, too, and you just kind of dab it. So, yeah, definitely, uh, Michelle, go like regular go. Go, Ash. Go, Ash. Edward, you like, do you like your Derwent? 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 Um... Does anybody know what I think of Durant's? <laughs> I haven't even been watching my videos. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I know they're they're from England. Um, yeah, you know, here's my gripe with the with the um, Durant's. Um, Oh yeah, Smoothie Seventy Seven. By the way, um, talented guy, really talented guy. Um, I subscribe to him. He's 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 one of the artists that I I like to watch. He does the the landscape stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, the the Derwents. I bought the Onyx pencils, and they advertise it as dark as a nine B. The most it was the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. But I believed them because I thought, well, they wouldn't lie to me. So I paid $75 for a whole round thing of the medium and dark onyx pencils. Where are those things at? Where are my drawings? Where did I lose them? I'm going to go see if I can find them. Nope. I must have donated them. I don't know where they are. Or they, they're used to this target practice or something. But the thing with the, the Onyx pencils is they, they weren't even dark as a 2B. They, they were terrible. Go check out my video on that. Um, those are the first two videos I've ever done. Matter of fact, I have to thank Derwent because they're the reason why I even have a channel. Because I started the channel just so I can complain about the Derwent Onyx pencils. That was it. I had no idea that people wanted to hear me talk about pencils, which led to the channel growing. Um, but I just started the channel because of Derwent. And unfortunately, my early experience with them kind of taints anything I get from them here on out. And I do have their drawing pencils too. They're okay. 
Uh, I've used them half halfway down, um, but I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Yeah, give them to the kids. Yeah. Pencil porn. Pencil porn? Mm. Porn's kind of a strong word. My wife hears that. She's going to freak. Honey, I'm not doing porn. I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, the sound effects. Yeah, I just, you know. Ooh, nice pencil. No, I get it. No. Hey, I'm all for humor. I'm all for humor. Mark Crilly. Hey, Mark Crilly, by the way, he's... He's one of the guys that I started watching three years ago before I even lifted a pencil. Um, he's very talented. He likes to do those um, like comic book type things, you know. It's like some kind of ghost, something ghost books that he's done. and He likes to draw some realism things. He, I think he has a new book out that does realism. Jeffrey Apiatu is a friend of mine. We actually communicate with each other on back channels. Um, back uh, two, three years ago, as he was just starting his channel out and he was using that crude camera of his, I shipped him a whole box of goodies, erasers and pencils and everything, because he's on, he's over there in Ghana and, you know, maybe he doesn't have access to a whole lot of supplies. And, and I wanted to support his work so that he can keep doing what he's doing and, and he can share it with others. And so we've kind of been, became online friends uh, because of that. And uh, that man, man, now that, that's the kind of drawing if you want, you want something to look just, just like a photograph. Jeffrey, talented, talented young guy. Yeah, he's blessed all right. He is definitely blessed. Great guy. Faber, it's Faber Castile, not Faber Caster. Faber Castile, Edward. Um, they're okay. I just commented on it a few minutes ago. Um, they're not my favorites, but I mean, I don't. I did a, um, I did a review of the, the little pocket one. It has a little ten dollar clip thing that's on it and it was all right a little on the hard side for me but it's okay all right pencil porn you're welcome edward thank you i really appreciate it really appreciate it stopping by Okay, well, this video is now 20 minutes after the hour, um, and I think you guys are all out of questions, which is okay, no problem there. So we'll just save them for the next time. Um, I will not be available next weekend for live streaming, um, but I will pick up again the following weekend. Uh, you'll get a notification if you click notif notify, notification enabled for your subscription. You know, I I'm glad you like it. Um, and uh, please keep supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Now, of course, you know, I'll have something released between now and then, but it will not be live stream. Okay. But I will pick up on live stream weekend after next because I won't be available uh, next weekend. Okay guys, you all take care. Uh, thank you very much for being here, being great subscribers. And uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.